Now that Apple has finally updated the MacBook Air, a lot of people are trying to figure out if they should buy the new MacBook Air or the similarly priced 2017 non-touch bar MacBook Pro. We'll show you all of the differences so you can make your decision today. The new MacBook Air finally has a Retina display, which is great, but compared to the Pro's display, it's a lot dimmer. The Pro's actually support P3 wide color gamut, so it's much more color accurate as well. In terms of portability, the Air only weighs a quarter of a pound lighter than the Pro, and stacking them on top of each other, they're basically the same size. From the side, you can see that the Air has more of a wedge shape compared to the Pro. Interestingly, at their tallest points, the Air is thicker than the Pro, but the front edge is quite a bit thinner. Because of that, the Air's keyboard slopes downward for a much more comfortable typing experience, where the Pro has sharp edges that can sometimes dig into your wrists. The Air also gets Apple's third gen keyboard, which features a silicone barrier under the keys that blocks the breeze, making the Air's keyboard more reliable and less prone to breakage than the second generation keyboard found in the Pro. The trackpad in the Pro is also significantly larger, even though the laptops are practically the same size. One thing we noticed is that the speakers in the 2017 Pro are actually quite a bit better than the ones in the new Air. <laughs> As you heard, the Pro speakers are obviously better, but the MacBook Air also does a couple of things better than the Pro. First off, it comes with Touch ID, which is really nice for logging in and using Apple Pay. It also comes with Apple's T2 security chip, which enables Hey Siri and takes care of a lot of tasks like automatic file encryption. If you want to learn more about that, click the card above. The MacBook Air is also rated at 12 hours of battery life compared to 10 on the Pro, but unfortunately it only gets a 30 watt charger compared to a 61 watt charger if you get the MacBook Pro, which means it will take longer to charge the Air. One of the reasons the Air gets such great battery life is because the processor and the graphics aren't designed with performance in mind. In Geekbench 4's multi-core test, the Pro scored quite a bit higher, and we saw the same thing in Cinebench R15 CPU test. For graphics, the Pro was about 50% faster in Geekbench 4, and that's the biggest advantage for the Pro, which will help in things like video editing. So that was a lot of information to take in, so let's break it down so you can make your decision today. If you care about performance, especially graphics performance, and you use your MacBook Pro outside, I would definitely get the Pro. If you absolutely must get the best battery life, then the Air is the obvious choice, and it's also better if you do tons of typing every day, since it's more comfortable and more reliable. Personally, the front edge on the Pro doesn't bother me, and I also love the larger trackpad. Now if you're a fan of loud and clear speakers, go with the Pro for sure. Touch ID and the T2 chip are nice, but they're honestly not deal breakers. Hopefully this video helped you pick out the MacBook Pro that's right for you. And if it did, you'll find links to the best deals in both the Air and the Pro in the video description. Thanks for watching. Make sure to subscribe so you don't miss out on more videos like this one, and we'll see you in the next one. If you enjoyed this video, like it and hit that subscribe button. Also, check out our price guide, which makes it extremely easy to find the best deals on Apple products updated daily. Be sure to follow us on social media, and we'll see you in the next video.